The dining philosopher's problem is a classic synchronization problem. Here we have a set of philosophers who are seated around a circular table and these philosophers, they spend their lives thinking or eating. And they, these philosophers, they do not interact with their neighbors. There is a shared bowl of rice in the center and there are n chopsticks for n philosophers. So here, if we see that there are five philosophers, then there are five chopsticks. Each philosopher needs both the chopsticks to eat. So whichever are the adjacent chopsticks for each philosopher, that philosopher needs both the chopsticks to eat from this shared bowl of rice. And occasionally, whenever a philosopher wants to eat, he or she will try to pick up one chopstick at a time and then eat from the bowl. Once he has finished eating, then he will release both the chopsticks. So here if we look at this dining philosopher's problem in terms of the system, then the bowl of rice in the center is the shared data set which is accessible by all the philosophers and these philosophers are the processes. So accessing this shared data set means entry into the critical section. Now the resources are the chopsticks which are being used to access this shared data set. So if there are five chopsticks, we have an array of five semaphores and all of these are initialized to one. So here is the structure of the process of philosopher I. The philosopher will wait for chopstick I and wait for chopstick I plus one modulus five. So if there are five philosophers, let's call them P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4 and there are five chopsticks. Let's call them C0, C1, C2, C3 and C4. So if philosopher P0 wants to eat, he will require chopstick C0 and C1. So that means if I is equal to zero, the chopsticks that are required are C0 and C1. This corons correspond to I and I plus 1 modulus 5 because 0 plus 1 modulus 5 will give us 1. Then if I is equal to 1, that means philosopher 1, philosopher 1 would require chopstick C1 and C2. So C1 and C2. This means again it will require I and I plus 1 modulus 5. So we can say that I is corresponding or let's say C I is corresponding to the chopstick on the right and I plus 1 modulus 5 is corresponding to the chopstick on the left or the left neighbor. So this is how the uh, process will proceed. It would wait on the chopstick I semaphore and each chopstick is being controlled by these semaphores which are initialized to 1. So philosopher 0 will wait on chopstick 0 and wait on chopstick 1. Once it has both the chopsticks, it will eat for a while and after finishing eating, he or she will signal the chopstick I and chopstick I plus 1 modulus 5. So whichever chopsticks they had used, the adjacent chopsticks that they had used for, use, uh, for eating, they now release those chopsticks by signaling the semaphores and then it will start thinking again. So what is the problem with this algorithm? Here each philosopher is waiting on semaphore i and waiting on semaphore i plus 1 modulus 5. So what can be the problem? Let's look at this. So here we see that the philosopher i is waiting on chopstick i. Let's say we are talking about i is equal to 0. So this is philosopher 0 and these are the chopsticks or the semaphores that he is waiting on because he needs both the chopsticks to eat. He will pick them one at a time. First he will pick either C0 or C1 and then he will take the other one. Now when P0 was executing this instruction wait chopstick i and he got the chopstick. That means P0 got chopstick C0. At that point in time, this process was preempted and the process for P1 started to run. 
Now here i is equal to 1. For p0, i was equal to 0. Now the process for p1 is running. So when the process p1 executes this instruction i1, wait on chopstick 1. Here i is equal to 1. So when it is able to get this chopstick, so he has got chopstick c1. Now again this process is preempted and let's say process p2 starts to run. So here i is equal to 2 and on executing instruction i1, p2 is able to get chopstick c2. Then p3 starts to run and p3 gets hold of chopstick c3 and then p4 starts to run and gets hold of chopstick c4. Now when let's say p0 wants to run again, now, so it runs the second instruction which is i2, it has to wait on chopstick i plus 1 modulus 5. So here i was 0, that means it is waiting for chopstick 1. So p0 now wants this chopstick c1, but it is being held by p1. p1 wants chopstick, chopstick c2, but it is being held by c2, by p2. So each philosopher it has got hold of one chopstick but it is waiting for another chopstick which is being held by some other philosopher. So this would be a deadlock condition. Here each philosopher hold some resource and is waiting for some other resource which is held by some other philosopher. So because of the preemption of processes and the way these instructions are being executed, this may result in a deadlock situation. So what can be the possible remedies over here? Here we can allow a philosopher to pick up chopsticks only if both the chopsticks are available. That means we will allow P0 to pick up chopsticks only if C0 and C1 both are available. If we look at this process, in the beginning both the chopsticks were available. But because the process was preempted, that is why some other philosopher got hold of the other chopstick. That means these two uh, instructions of getting the resources should be available in the critical section only. That means once the philosopher enters the critical section and then only the chopsticks should be available for him or her to be to pick up. The other possible solution is to use an asymmetric solution. That means the odd number philosopher will pick up the le left chopstick first and then the right chopstick. That means philosopher 1 and 3 will first pick up their left chopstick and then the right chopstick and the even numbered philosopher will pick up the right chopstick and then the left chopstick. By doing so, it will be ensured that the philosopher has access to both the chopsticks and both the chopsticks are available to him when he is hungry and this will not result in a deadlock. Let's see how monitors can be used to solve this dining philosopher's problem and this we will take a look in the next video.